Cardiff tests are designed to measure vision in young children and adults who can't communicate in the usual way. People who can't take part in what we think of as a standard eye test. That includes very young children, children and adults with intellectual disabilities, adults who've suffered a stroke and adults with dementia. We have a Cardiff acuity test and a Cardiff contrast test designed for children and we also have adult versions of both tests. The Cardiff tests use the principle of preferential looking. That means we rely on a child's or adult's eye movements to tell us whether they see the picture or not. It's a different technique to the usual way of asking a patient to name or match pictures, but it's a simple technique that's very easy to learn. Each card has a picture placed either at the top or the bottom of the card, with the other half of the card blank. If the patient can see the picture, then they will want to look at it. We can watch the patient's eye movements to tell us whether they can see the picture. Each picture is made up of black and white outline, or in the contrast test, it's a grey and grey outline. But let's leave that for the moment and concentrate on the acuity test. The brightness of the black and white, on average, is exactly the same as the grey background. This means if the patient can't see the outline, the whole card looks blank. As we proceed through the test, the pictures get finer and finer in outline, so that eventually, when a picture is beyond the acuity of our patient, there's simply nothing to see. The whole card looks blank, our patient can't look at the picture and that will tell us that we've moved beyond the patient security limit. Are you ready? What's in there? Now if we're showing these cards to a child like Arwen here then while she can see the picture she's going to want to look at it especially if we make the procedure enjoyable. When she can't see the picture she's not going to look at it. Should we try another one? Quack quack! Quack quack! So we have a way of establishing the limit of vision or visual acuity. That is the finest outline that she can reliably look at. It really is as simple as that. So how do we go about it? Well, the overriding principle of preferential looking is that the examiner should not know in advance where the picture is because it's very easy to be biased and expect a child to look in a particular direction and we need to be objective. So we achieve this by having three cards at each level, two at the bottom, one at the top or vice versa and we shuffle the cards to begin with. So with a few shuffles I now have no idea where the picture is going to be. The easiest way to judge eye movements is to place the picture so that my eyes are in the centre of the card and I'm then looking to see whether the child looks above or below my eye level. We look for the first eye movement and make a mental note of it. Go on to the next picture, make a mental note of the child's eye movements and only then do we check to see if we're correct. If we're correct on both cards, then we can then proceed to the next final level of acuity. The test is calibrated for two distances, 50 centimetres and one metre. We need to use those quite close working distances for two reasons. First of all, when we're working with young children, it's very difficult to get their attention from a long distance, so we need to be quite close. And secondly, of course, we need to be close enough to be able to judge the child's eye movements accurately. So we'll begin by shuffling the card so I don't know where the picture is going to be. Show the card and Arwen looks up. The second card and Arwen looks down. We were right. The picture was at the top of the card the first time and the bottom of the card the next time. Now let's watch again without seeing where the picture is first. 
Where do you think she looked? That's right, it was up. What does the duck say? And this time? Where now? Up again. Two out of two correct. We move on to the next visual acuity level. What's that? Where this time? Up. And this time? What's up there? Down. Are you ready? And so we carry on through the sequence of cards until we're no longer able to judge where the picture is. Is there a duck? Where's that duck? Oh, is that too hard to see? Watch Arwen's eye movements now. I don't think it's possible to tell now where the picture is, simply because she's not looking reliably in either direction. At this stage, we can go back and show Arwen an easier picture. The end point of the test is the finest visual acuity card for which we can reliably judge the position of the picture. I'll give you a useful little tip here. Here's Helen with Oliver. Note how quickly Helen's lifting the card. Very good. When a small child sees the picture, he's not necessarily going to keep staring at it. Often the child will look at the picture and then quickly glance away, usually to your face. And you can see that that's exactly what Oliver is doing. One, two, three. One, two, three. If you raise the card too slowly, you'll miss the eye movement. <gasps> Perfect! It's a big Jesse, it's a big yellow one. Do you want to try it? Go on. See if you can see the digger. Wow! So far, we've seen visual acuity measured binocularly, but of course it's also important to measure vision in each eye in turn. So here's Cameron carrying out the test with Reese. Are you ready? What is it? Digger. It's a digger. There are different ways of covering up one eye. If Reese isn't happy to wear the glasses for long, we can try something else. I'll tell you what, should we give Daddy a job? And one alternative is for Dad to hold a cover over Reese's eye. What's this one then? Are you ready? The rigorous way to use the Cardiff Acuity Test or the Cardiff Contrast Test is just as I've described them. Card at your own eye level, two presentations except two out of two correct, go up and down at the end point and so on. But once you're experienced with preferential looking, you can begin to adapt it to your own use. Clinically, we all use shortcuts and shortcuts are useful because children's attention doesn't stay with us very long. So while you're a beginner of preferential looking, be rigorous and systematic and use it in the recommended fashion. Once you're used to it, you can build in your own modifications. Although the test is designed for preferential looking, we can use it in different ways. This is Jonathan. Because of his cerebral palsy, Jonathan doesn't have reliable eye movements and he's not able to reliably look at the pictures. So I can't use his eye movements to judge whether he can see the picture or not. So for Jonathan, we use pointing instead. Can you show me this time where that picture is? It's for patients like Jonathan that we have introduced the new adult Cardiff University Acuity Test. The pictures in the standard acuity test were suitable for Jonathan when he was a little boy, but now he's 20, we need to move on to more grown-up pictures. Similarly, if we were to see an elderly patient with dementia, it would be inappropriate to use baby pictures. The adult test has adult-appropriate pictures, like the coat hanger you can see here. The Cardiff contrast test is similar in principle to the acuity test. We use the same pictures, pictures that are familiar to young children in the children's version 
and adult appropriate pictures for the adult test. This time we have dark grey and light grey making up the outline and as the contrast reduces the pictures get fainter and fainter until when our contrast sensitivity is no longer good enough to see the picture the whole picture looks blank. We don't have a set distance for the contrast test because the appropriate distance for a particular patient will depend entirely on their acuity level. What we're trying to measure here is the patient's ability to see large but faint targets. So the target needs to be well within the patient's acuity limit and the distance may be very close. Okay, so you've got to teach me because I don't know what's the sign for that. House. Do you know what the sign is? Can you remember? <gasps> there aren't many contrast measurements that there aren't many contrast sensitivity tests available. So we can use the Cardiff University contrast test over a wide age range and in lots of different ways. Victoria is naming the pictures for Helen and she's also using Makaton signs to tell us what the picture is at the same time. Are you ready? Yeah. One, two, three. Look. Anne is deaf and uses sign language, so she can tell us what the pictures are by signing them rather than speaking. Because Joanne is an adult, we turn to the adult Cardiff contrast test and use more appropriate pictures. The end point, of course, can be quite clear. There. Here's Joanne there. telling us she can no longer see the picture. Back to an easier one, and Joanne can get it right. A telephone. Okay, that's lovely. The Cardiff Near test uses the same design principle as the Acuity test, but this time it is not a preferential looking test. This time we want the child to name or match or sign the pictures in a similar way to a conventional near vision test. We have a matching card so we can begin by asking the child to name, match or sign the pictures so that we can be sure they're able to do the test. If I show you some nice big pictures can you shout out what they are? Yeah. Is that all right? Begin by asking the child to name or sign the pictures on the matching card. And this one? This is Luke doing just that. Fantastic. Draw, habbo, how it fit. Brilliant. This way we know before the test exactly what Luke is going to call each of the pictures. Okay. What have we got up at the top? Board. Here? Brilliant. Tad. Out. Fantastic. And the next one? Please. Then we can ask Luke to do the same for the test card. Brilliant. And the Out. next one? Fantastic. And the next one along? Car. And, the last one? and record the finest Brilliant. pictures that Luke can name yeah. correctly. Dad. Apple. Dad. Okay. Brilliant. And the last one? Dad. Can you get this tiny one? How? Fantastic. Well done. Super. The Cardiff University Acuity Test and the Contrast Test are suitable for very young children and older children with disabilities. The adult Cardiff University tests are designed with appropriate pictures for adults with intellectual disabilities or communication problems arising from stroke or dementia. All four tests are designed for preferential looking, but they can be used as naming or signing tests, or, as you've seen on the DVD, in other ways, such as pointing, if that is more appropriate for the patient. The Cardiff University Acuity Test covers a range of acuity values from 6 over 96 to 6 over 3.7 at the two recommended testing distances. That is 20 over 320 to 20 over 12.5. There is also a low vision version 
for practitioners dealing specifically with children with poor vision. And that test has its lowest security value of 6 over 192, or 20 over 640, at the testing distance of 50 centimetres. If you have the standard acuity test, it is possible to buy the three extra sets of cards that convert it to the low vision version. Just contact the distributor. The Cardiff University Contrast Test, as I've explained, can be used at any distance that is appropriate for the patient's visual acuity. At a distance of one metre, the detail of the pictures is equivalent to a spatial frequency of 3.8 cycles per degree, which is the peak of the contrast sensitivity curve for a normally sighted person. At a much closer distance of 25 centimetres, the spatial frequency is one cycle per degree, so this closer distance may be better for a child who is visually impaired. The Cardiff Near Test is designed for naming and signing and so is suitable for children from around two years of age. It is calibrated for a distance of 33 centimetres, but it can be used at closer distance if a child is visually impaired and the acuity score can be scaled appropriately. For the Cardiff University Acuity, Contrast and Near Tests, the manual for each will give you the normal values that we expect in children at different ages. Remember that children differ in their stage of development, so the normal values can be quite wide. <laughs>